When making a scatter plot, the first thing we need to do is find the minimum and maximum of both our variables. That way we'll be able to label the axes correctly. So our minimum tree height was 12 and our maximum tree height was 32. And our minimum yield was 313 and our maximum yield was 1103. So when we make our scatter plot, we want to make sure our axes at least cover those intervals of values. So our first tree had a height of 23 feet and a yield of 718 pounds. So this is our X and Y coordinate. So let's go to 23 feet, that's about here, and 718 pounds, that's about here. And we'll do that for all the points. All right, there we go. That was awful. So here's a much quicker way to do it. If you press stat and then enter, these are your list. And in list one, we're gonna type all the tree heights. And in list two, we're gonna type all the avocado yields. All right, now that you have the data input, press second y equals. This is our stat plot menu. And we're gonna press enter on plot one. We're gonna press enter again to turn it on. And the first option here is a scatter plot. That's what we want. The X list is our explanatory variable and we input those into list one, so we're good. Same with our Y list, our response variable is in list two. And you can choose what sort of mark you wanna use. I'm just gonna leave it at its default. Now if you press zoom and nine, here's our scatter plot. So if we compare the two of them, they look pretty similar. Now, if you have to copy down a scatter plot, I still suggest typing it into the calculator first and then just transferring over the points. It's much easier than plotting the actual coordinates. Anytime you're describing a scatter plot, you wanna talk about direction, outliers, form, and strength. The acronym DOOFS might help you remember this. So let's talk about direction first. We can see as tree height increases, our avocado yield tends to increase. So our direction is positive. Now, as far as outliers, we do have these few points right here. They don't fit with the rest of the trend I'm seeing here. For form, a line seems to fit the data quite well. And I would say our strength is moderately strong because the points do fit our form, our line, fairly well. So we'll say the relationship between tree height and avocado yield is a moderately strong, positive linear relationship. There are some potential outliers for the trees that are 14 and 16 feet with yields of 974 and 874 pounds. With the data already in our list, calculating the least squares regression line is pretty easy. If you press the stat button again and go to calculate, you have two options. You can use option four, which will give you the slope and then the intercept, or you can choose option eight, which gives you the intercept then the slope. I like option four. So it says, what's your X list? We're gonna keep list one. What's our Y list? We're gonna keep list two. And for frequency list, just leave that blank. Now where it says store regression equation, if you press the VARS button and you go over to Y VARS and then press enter on function and enter again on Y sub one, it's gonna store our regression equation in Y one. Here's our regression equation. So our slope is 21.4 approximately and our y-intercept is 231.9 approximately. Now, if you press y equals right now, here's our regression equation stored right in y sub one. So now when I press graph, I have my original scatter plot with the regression equation. But let's go back to our output. So stat, calculate. We're gonna choose the fourth option and just go back down to calculate. Let's copy down this regression equation. So this is yield hat. It means predicted yield is 21.39 times height plus 231.91. By writing words here instead of variables, we keep everything in context. So let's interpret this slope. Each time the height increases by one foot, we expect our overall yield to increase by 21.39 pounds. So we can say for each one foot increase in tree height, we predict the yield to increase by 21.39 pounds. 
make sure you have a word like predicted in there. If you just say it will increase by 21.39 pounds, you're implying causation, and that's not correct. This is a prediction. Now let's interpret the y-intercept. Now the y-intercept comes into effect when the height of the tree is zero. So this whole quantity would be zeroed out and our yield would be 231.91 pounds. So that doesn't make sense. We expect a tree of height zero, so a tree that doesn't exist, to not produce any avocados. So we'll say we predict a tree of height zero to have a yield of 231.91 pounds of avocados. This does not make sense in this context. Now sometimes the y-intercept does make sense, it just depends on what sort of relationship you're describing. Now if an avocado tree measured 23 feet, we can use our equation from part b to predict the yield. Predicted yield equals 21.39 times 23 plus 231.91. That gives us a predicted yield of 723.9 pounds. Like this video? Check out my book, The Ultimate AP Statistics Practice Book. It's got 100 problems, all with videos just like this. You can pick it up on Amazon.com.